I cannot stress this enough to cut off all of your friends because if you don't go anywhere, you won't spend money. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alana and if you're not new, welcome back. Today's video I'm really excited for. I'm going to be giving financial advice to teenagers and young adults. If you're in high school or just out of high school, this video is perfect for you. I'm only 20 so I don't have a lot of experience in like adulthood, but I will do my best to help whoever needs it. So for a little bit of background, um, like I said, I'm 20 years old, but while I was 18, before I was turned 19, I had about $10,000 saved. This was from me just implementing things into my lifestyle that helped me to save money without actually having to budget or save, if that makes sense. I think I'm a pretty good saver, but I do like to splurge still. But I also realize how important it is to always have money saved up in case of emergency. You never know what's gonna happen. And it's always good to just have cash on hand in case you need it. Things don't always go as we plan, so it's always good to have money just as a backup. I feel like a lot of times when people graduate high school, the jump from being a kid to an adult just happens really quickly and a lot of people feel really underprepared. People often associate their level of success with the amount of money that they have, but the truth is that success comes in all different forms. You'll never feel fully accomplished in life if you're not happy with who you are as a person and I fully believe that it is most important to work on yourself as a human being first. And once you're at peace with yourself, then you'll be able to find success in other aspects of life. Um, with all that being said though, financial freedom is very helpful and it will make you feel a lot less stressed. Money is not everything. People oftentimes compare themselves to other people and the amount of money or success that they have, but everybody's path is different, everybody's journey is different, and we all are figuring things out on our own. So my first tip is to get a job, which might seem pretty stupid because obviously you need to have a job in order to make money. I think that it's important to always want to do your best at your job, even if it's just a part-time job at a fast food restaurant or at a store. Um, always do your best because it will get recognized. My first job was at a frozen yogurt shop. I always would pick up extra hours whenever I could. I was only working part time and when I was in high school I ran track and cross country and I was in a lot of different clubs. So I didn't have a lot of free time but in all of my free time I would always pick up extra shifts and that really helped out on days that I had like meets and stuff and days that I had to call off. Even if you just pick up a couple extra hours a week, it will really add up on all of your paychecks. Also, if you're able to work two jobs at once, do it. Even if you can only do it for a couple months and then you get worn out, it's 100% worth it because those couple months of an extra income will make such a big difference in your savings because you're just doubling what you have coming in. It's always important to remember that it is okay to make sacrifices. I had to say no to a lot of weekend friend hangouts or like last minute road trips and vacations and stuff just because I wanted to pick up some extra hours at work. I also didn't really go on a lot of trips over spring break or winter break or anything because I was always working. Obviously if it was something that was like really important or really big, I would call off of work for it, but usually I would always try to be there and always try to show up. My second tip, which is really important, is to always, always have a side hustle. Now, some of you might be wondering what exactly is a side hustle, and a side hustle is basically just a side job that you can do that will bring in extra cash. Usually, side jobs are also paid in cash under the table, so you don't have to pay taxes on them. Having more than one source of income is the key to saving. Sometimes your schedule won't allow you to commit fully to two separate employers, so just having a normal steady job and another side hustle is a great way to still have multiple forms of income. If it's possible, make Make sure that your side hustle is something that you enjoy doing. For me, it was always babysitting and this honestly worked out great because I was able to turn my side hustle into a full-time job and now I'm a full-time nanny and I love it and it's become my main source of income. Also, if it's something that you enjoy doing, it won't feel like such a job and it won't be like, oh, I don't want to go because you are going to have fun while you're doing it and still make money. Some examples that I came up with to help 
help you guys get started if you aren't really into kids and you don't like babysitting. If you're artistic or musically inclined, you can always teach like art lessons or music lessons to people, taking pictures and editing people's videos for them. That's how my brother started his career was just doing photography on the side and it turned into his full-time career. You could also look into tutoring or even just like manual labor stuff like mowing people's lawns or walking their dogs. Tip number three is really what changed the game. For me, I'm not good with budgets. I hate budgeting. I think it's so much work to have to like go and make a budget and then actually follow it. So I never really took the time to make a budget also because my income would fluctuate a lot depending on the week because sometimes I would babysit a lot more than others. There was a period of time where I was working two jobs. So it was always just depend on when I was getting paid. Once you put your money into savings, don't touch it. I had a little game with myself where I would save a certain amount of money and then once I hit that mark, I would not let myself ever go under it. For example, the first time I ever hit $5,000, I never allowed myself to go under $5,000. So I hit 5,000 and I said, never in my life will I ever have less than 5K in my account. So that way, instead of limiting yourself to a spending amount, you're just maximizing your savings. So every time I'd hit a certain threshold, I would never allow myself to go under it. And so instead, of saying like oh you have two hundred dollars you can spend this month then i would spend however much i wanted but i just knew that i would never go under what i started at Tip number four is a big one for people who are around my age. Minimize your monthly expenses as much as possible. I know how annoying it can get to be living at home sometimes and you just feel like you're finally an adult and you want to move on with your life. A lot of your friends are probably moving out and getting their own places and having so much fun and you just don't wanna be stuck at home with your parents anymore. However, just stick it out. There are so many benefits to living at home. Honestly, rent is the biggest waste of money you're just spending money every month and you won't be able to put any of that into savings so you're basically just working to pay your rent my goal is to not ever move out of my parents house until I'm buying a home so that way I'll never have to pay rent but if you are in a situation where you're not able to live at home or live somewhere for free then I would definitely recommend getting roommates I know it can be nice to have your own space but having a roommate will at least cut down on your monthly costs because you'll be splitting rent and utilities with somebody else or with multiple other people which will then allow you to save at least a little bit more money. Even if you're financially able to move out and get your own place, don't rush it. I could have moved out when I was 18. I had enough money to pay rent every month. However, I wouldn't have been able to save as much as I did because of it. Just because you have the money does not mean you have to spend it. That is the biggest piece of advice that I can give anybody. Another tip for minimizing your monthly expenses is to not have any loans. So this goes for car loans, student loans, credit card loans, anything like that. I don't have a credit card because I don't need it. My rule for myself is that if you can't afford to buy it two times in cash, then you can't afford to buy it at all. So first thing, get rid of your credit cards. If you have a credit card, pay them all off and don't use them anymore. If you have a car loan, try to just get out of it and then buy a car out in cash because that way you're not paying interest on it every month. If you buy a car in cash, you won't have a monthly car bill and you'll just have to worry about insurance and gas. If you're a college student, look at applying for scholarships and grants because there are a ton of them out there and a lot of times they're really easy to get and people just don't know about them. So just do your research and try to find as many scholarships as possible instead of taking out more student loans. Look into community college because it's honestly so much cheaper, especially if you don't know what you want to major in yet. Community college is a great option because you're able to live at home so you don't have to pay for a dorm, you don't have to pay for a meal plan, you don't have to commute as far to your university if you're living off campus, you don't have to move. There's just so many expenses that come with moving to a university that you wouldn't have to worry about at a community college. Plus you're paying so much less for one credit hour at a community college than you are at university. And especially if you don't know what you're majoring in yet, you're gonna be taking all the same classes anyway. So just 
stick it out at home. Also, community college allows you to get a job easier. I was able to work full time and have a second job and babysit when I was going to school at community college because I could plan my schedule around my work schedule. So it just made it a lot easier to save money that first year of college. There's a lot of websites online like Amazon and Chegg that you can go to to rent your textbooks so that you're not spending hundreds of dollars every semester to buy new books that you're never gonna touch. Tip number five is to limit unnecessary spending. So basically this just means to cut off all of your friends because if you don't go anywhere, you won't spend money. Just kidding. I used to spend a lot of money on food. I would go out to eat almost every single day and it was honestly just the biggest waste of money. When I started my respiratory program, I started packing my lunch every day when I'd go to school and work and clinicals and it made such a big difference in the amount of money that I'd spend. Another big thing was making my own coffee and bringing water. I bring my hydro flask with me everywhere and I also would just bring coffee with me every morning. It's a good thing that I like to sleep in because I never would wake up early enough to stop and go to Starbucks so I was forced to just make my own coffee at home which saved me a lot of money because that's like what like seven dollars a day so thirty five dollars a week on coffee which is more than I spend on gas um, another tip is that when you go to the store this could be a grocery store or just a normal store only go if you know that you need something. So when you're grocery shopping, make a list so that you're not just buying whatever you see. Don't buy things just to flex or seem cool or seem like you have a bunch of money because if you're spending all the money, then you're not saving for anything in the future. It'll be way cooler when you're in your early 20s and you're buying a house. Tip number six is a small one, but it will make a difference. It is to save your change. I used to put all of my loose change and like any loose bills that I had into a piggy bank. I don't know how long exactly I did that for, but it was a few months, maybe close to a year. One day I randomly decided to open it and see how much money I had in there. And there was probably around four or $500. And my last tip is to invest your money. For some people, if you're comfortable with investing in the stock market and kind of playing around with stock, you can most definitely go ahead and do that. I am very frugal with my money and where I put it, and I don't have enough knowledge to know how the stock market works. So I don't feel comfortable putting my money into that, knowing that it is possible to lose it. I find a lot more comfort in things that I am sure of and that I can like take my time to make it a educated decision on. There are safer investments than stocks though, like money markets, you can just go to your local bank and put your money into a money market, which is basically like a savings account that's gonna create interest over time. It's best if you leave it in for like five or 10 years, but you can always take it out before that if you need to and it isn't losing any value, so you might as well just leave it in an account that's gonna have a little bit of interest versus none. Understand that I am not a financial advisor, so these are just the things that I did that helped me save a lot of money. I was able to save about $10,000 from doing all of these things without even trying to like actively save. I never budgeted or did it anything like that. These are just the things that worked best for me personally. But understand that everybody has a different path in life. For me, I'm very goal oriented. So it's easy for me to say no to things because I need to save money just because I have the future in mind. I know that I I want to buy a house by a certain age so I work hard now so that I'll be able to do that and then once I get there I'll be financially stress-free which helps to motivate me a lot because I know that it won't always be like this and if I really do want something still I'll still buy it and I still have enough money saved that I don't have to stress about it also understand that you can't control everything in life sometimes things happen that you don't plan for and you won't be able to save as much money as you'd hope just because I was able to save 10k when I was 18 doesn't mean that you are supposed to have $10,000 when you're 18. I'm 20 now and I know a lot of people my age and older than me that don't have as much money saved as me which isn't meant to be me bragging by any means. I'm not trying to brag or flaunt how much money I have. I'm just simply telling you that it is possible to save a lot of money when you are
are at a young age. The biggest thing is to not be hard on yourself. Let yourself make mistakes. Don't compare yourself to other people because everybody lives their life at a different rate. There are no rules, there's no guidelines, there's no, you have to accomplish this by a certain age. Just be confident in yourself and let your small victories keep on pushing you to do better in life. Stay positive, stay humble, and the rest will all follow. I really do believe in all of you guys. I think it's 100% possible to save money, to pay off your debt, and to be successful financially in life as long as you're motivated and you can stick to it. It takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to say no to things even though you know you can afford it again I cannot stress this enough just because you have the money doesn't mean that you have to spend it I hope that this video helped you guys and motivated you to just kind of start your money saving journey if you have any specific questions my DMs and comment section is always open you can always share this video with anybody who you think might need some financial advice thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate all of the love and support don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications by hitting that little bell next to the subscribe button i hope that you all have a beautiful day and that everybody gets in their bag love you guys